Okay, let's call to order the regular business meeting of the Board of Education for Monday, uh, August 22nd. Order. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, beginning of the year. Uh, if I could ask everyone to please stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, welcome. Exciting beginning to another school year. I'm still adjusting to the fact that the last one's over. So, all right. Uh, roll call, please. Stephen Arthur. Here. Jim Batson. Here. Alex Delicoli. Here. Pat Purdy. Here. Karen Lundstedt. Here. Scott Luce. Here. Ellen Maurer. Here. Okay, so we have everybody tonight. Um, our agenda, uh, no real president's report. Um, other than to say thank you to everybody for all their hard work. It was a great opening week, um, one of the highlights of the year, uh, to get to see everybody, welcome the new people, welcome all the teachers back, and, and get all excited um, for the year. So I understand everything went well. Um, we'll have reports from our student school board reps. We have five of you here today, right? All right, can't wait to hear how your first week was, first couple days anyway. Uh, superintendent's report. <laughs> Um, which will include approval of the fiscal year 2017 budget. Um, we will open it up for public comment. Anybody wishing to speak? Um, I'll remind you when you speak, please state your name and address for the record and try to limit your comments to three minutes or less. Uh, we'll approve the consent vote agenda, which I believe is the same as what was reviewed earlier this month in committee. And then uh, brief updates from program and personnel, facilities and finance, nothing from property. Nothing from CEDAW? Okay. Uh, anything from IASD? No? Okay. And then we should be finished. All right. Okay. Uh, let's start out with um, our student school board reps. So why don't you introduce yourself so that uh, people on the camera could get to know you? <laughs> all right. Let's see, is this on? All right. Uh, I'm Spencer Baumrick, a senior at LHS. Hello. I'm Daniel Lowe. I'm also a senior at LHS. Hi everyone, I'm Emily Regan and I am a junior at LHS. Hi, I'm Aparajita Adiraju and I'm a senior at VHHS. Hello, uh, my name is Akash Seti and I'm also a senior at Vernon Hills High School. Should I get started? All right. Uh, so for our report, uh, our debut, uh, we chose to narrow in on some specific things that make LHS unique and um, just kind of expand on those. So. Uh, we did have a really, really good start to the year. Uh, our first week we had um, really cooperative seniors as far as cooperation with the administration and all that, which following the previous year was, um, you know, a bit uneasy, but it was a really good start to the year in that respect. And also going along with that, uh, along with Dr. Nelson, our um, wellness and prevention coordinator, uh, we are launching a new initiative called Life of a Wildcat. Uh, which is really to promote positive attitudes at LHS and um, avoiding drugs and alcohol, uh, to live better lifestyles and overall be more positive role models for our school and those around us. And also happening at LHS is auditions for In the Heights, uh, a musical about the Washington Heights neighborhood in New York City, which um, it's kind of strange but also kind of fun that we're doing this play because it's about a Latino community and so it's going to be really interesting for Libertyville to explore sort of um, how we're going to be able to approach that and make it authentic and respectful so that's starting up and uh, I'll give it over to Daniel Alrighty so even after the first week of school uh, student council has to start planning for homecoming which is happening in three weeks which is very scary for student council, uh, but we're managing. Um, so we decided uh, from last year, um, based on student votes, that we would be doing the theme, The Spirit of Adventure. Now, it's not, it's not the, the Pixar movie, but it's about the worldwide traveling kind of theme. So we're really pumped about that. Um, you can also track the homecoming asks that people are doing uh, using the hashtag Elbow Pride. Um, every week, we're going to be randomly selecting a couple and we'll be giving them worldwide restaurant gift, gift coupons, so like Uncle Julio's or Hanakawa, to like coincide with that theme. So we're really excited about that. Um, because of the large success that we had uh, from last year, we're bringing back the LHS Spirit Packs, 
um, which is basically a pack of five t-shirts that kids will be um, encouraged to wear at the football games, at the home football games. And these were a huge success um, last year. I think currently we've sold about 450 to 500 of these packs already. Um, and our homecoming themes, uh, not homecoming themes, our, <clears throat> our football themes include a Hawaiian theme, which uh, this is, I credit myself, this is the luau. We have, uh, we have tie-dye, orange crush, and the jungle. So those are our uh, four t-shirt designs, and then we have color wars for our homecoming. As you might have seen, uh, we had our very own LHS student, Laura Zhang, perform uh, rhythmic gymnastics at uh, Rio. Um, it was incredible. It was awesome to see her and see the wide support that we had at our school. Everyone dressed up in red, white, and blue on Friday. Uh, we took a photo at 7.15. We even had this big poster printed out that says, Good luck at the Olympics, Laura Zhang. Um, it was just so awesome to see um, the school participate. Um, even throughout the day, uh, the schedule was given out so we could live stream it and just support her. Um, she did, got 11th place, which is the highest that any, or she tied with the highest score that any American has gotten at the Olympics. Meanwhile, like, I get winded when I go up the stairs, so very casual. And she's currently planning to look, um, to train and look forward to Tokyo 2020 Olympics. So we're just super happy to have her, and like, it's, it's been a great, great first week so far. So even just it's the first week of school and we've already jumped into the schedule, everyone started learning, we already have homework and all um, our assignments, but um, even during the summer, the learning pursuit, so um, lots of students um, attended a trip to Spain with the Spanish department, and it, I myself went on the trip, and I can honestly say it was one of the most incredible experiences that I've ever been fortunate enough to have. We went to big cities such as Madrid, Barcelona, and Sevilla, and we even stopped in Morocco for a day, which was incredible. It was a totally different culture, but just seeing the differences in the culture and being immersed um, with the local people and seeing all these beautiful sites was just an amazing opportunity, and I'm so lucky that we were able to go on it. And another opportunity for travel that um, LHS students had over the summer was going to Cambodia. There was a new club two years ago at our school called Caring for Cambodia. And basically after the Khmer Rouge genocide in Cambodia, um, the educated population of adults was um, wiped out and it left the Cambodian society mainly agrarian. So what this club aims to do is they fundraise all year round and then they pay for their own trip to Cambodia to help build schools and educate children, which is an amazing thing that they were able to do and they've really helped to transform the society of Cambodia even after it feels the uh, effects of the horrific Khmer Rouge genocide. So the club members spent their time um, educating, building schools, but then they also were able to spend time in Shanghai and in weekends in Cambodian cities. So for Vernon, sorry. So for Vernon Hills, we also had a very successful first week of school. And so, so for some school updates, uh, over the summer, our food labs were updated and upgraded, and I myself study in one of them for consumer management, and the TVs and overhead projectors allow for a better learning experience um, when watching the teacher demonstrate. And we would also like to thank the D128 Foundation for helping with some of the innovative learning spaces, such as the health classroom, a collaborative learning space, CRC updates, and professional development space for teachers. So last Tuesday, was freshman orientation and for the first time we reorganized this orientation so that the freshmen were able to walk their schedule, talk to their counselor, sing the fight song and attend classes sort of that were led by the orientation leaders. So we worked with Mr. Young um, to administer a survey to the freshmen and get their opinion. So all freshmen respondents and group leaders stated that it was a positive experience and 99% of the freshmen said that it was helpful to walk their schedule and 90% of them said it helped them prepare for the first day. So overall, it was a very successful opportunity. And last Wednesday, Dr. Gilliam met with all the students to discuss expectations about the upcoming school year and how everyone should agree to disagree, be respectful, and choose words wisely, especially in this political climate at this time. So our open house will be on September 6th, where all the parents will be able to meet with the teachers and walk their schedules. 
Um, also, all seniors met um, the first late start, so last Wednesday, to talk about senior privileges and college placement. And in English electives, all seniors will have a unit on college writing essay. And Mrs. Bolito is the new college counselor, and she's made the College Resource Center a more student-friendly place to ask questions. And many students, even in the first week of school, went and ate lunch there and asked questions about the application process and how that went. So um, for our activities, our kickoff dance and lip sync contest is coming up on September 10th. And also, over the summer, we had some students travel to Iceland and we talked to some of the people that went on the trip and they said it was an ex amazing experience and they got to visit the capital, waterfalls, geysers, hot springs, glaciers, and the Blue Lagoon. And we also had students travel to Quetico. And some student council updates are that the freshman elections are going to be at the end of this August, so we will get to see who the freshman representatives will be. And first class also begins this week, Friday, with the initiative VH Give again, with the theme Be Nice, which is a great message to start out with. Awesome. Um, so now moving on to a little bit of fine arts. So we've started off the year strong with our uh, current musical that we're working on, and that's going to be The Adams Family. So we've hosted all of the auditions and stuff, and we're hopefully going to have a, a great prospect for the, for the next season. Um, also, uh, we have a new orchestra directors, Mr. Green and Mr. Nichols, uh, Mrs. Nichols, Ms. Nichols. So we have a, we're looking excited to having them in. And moving on to sports, we have a lot of things going on in the sports world at Vernon Hills High School. Uh, the biggest news is that we're starting off con uh, this year with a new conference. So we're going to be the, the CSL uh, division, the Central uh, Suburban League, is split into two divisions this year. And we're going to be joining a uh, division with Glenbrook North, Highland Park, Maine East, Maine West, and Deerfield. Um, also, gr um, a great thing for our academic uh, a team is that we had a very distinct on, all, all honor rolls academic teams this year uh, with, uh, with all teams having a uh, cumulative GPA of 3.0 or higher during their seasons and this is, this is last year for winter and spring sports so, and 17 teams actually earned this honor so that's a pretty big deal that we're proud of. Um, this year we've started off really strong especially with golf uh, as you know last year they finished fourth in the state and they picked up just where they left off winning uh, the first place in the Glenbard North Tournament recently. And um, in that tournament, we had star North noteworthy players such as Brian Fabia winning first place and Justin Park winning third place, both individually. Um, also, fo first football game is going to be at, uh, with, at Grays Lake Central. We got a good positive outlook for that. And Vernon Hills is actually hosting two days of soccer tournaments. Today, as you saw, a very full parking lot. And also tomorrow night. Then, in, uh, also great news, is the, our academic teams, uh, namely F FBLA, Future Business Leaders of America. And we've been sending a lot of kids to nationals over the, uh, for the past years, and this year has been no exception. Um, there, this nationals, there were 14,000 participants that competed in events and attended workshops during the national convention in, in Atlanta. And we sent 36 students from our school to compete in Atlanta. So we're really proud of that. And we had many uh, Vernon Hills High School top 10 finishers. So we're really proud of what our team did last year. And we have a great outlook for the future in sports, academics, all around. So thank you. That's great. What was the most memorable uh, part of the trip to Atlanta? Um, I think last year, the trip was in Chicago, so we'd already seen all the sites, but this year going to Atlanta with so many new people and meeting all the LHS kids too, we all had a great time going on the flight. And more than just the event, which was also a wonderful experience, getting to meet a lot of new people and seeing the convention and how Atlanta rolls. It's a little warm there in the summertime. Yes, it was very hot. And then we had our uh, resident board member, Zach Kersenberger who sang the national anthem, which was a great honor for Zach and our school to be out there in front of all those participants and schools from across the nation. So that was a great honor. Any comments on the early start this year? We're very happy to be done by winter break. Uh, we fully support the decision. <laughs> we agree. <laughs> okay, great. All right, great job. Thank you for that. Um, it's already been busy, I can tell. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, and let's see, uh, school superintendent's report. 
Okay, we have several things uh, this evening in the superintendent's report. And first, we want to give one uh, final shout out to Laura Zing. Just amazing. Went back over the weekend and watched uh, rounds one and two and three and four. Just an incredible uh, athletic event to start with. And she is just on the rise. It's going to be exciting to watch her over the next few years. Uh, and she's such a great student at LHS on top of it, you know, the schedule that she keeps. So really, really amazing stuff. So congratulations to her and her family, certainly. Um, secondly, I think um, at least the board is aware, as uh, many of you may have seen in a supplement to the Chicago Tribune, uh, I think it was a week ago on Sunday, that uh, Libertyville and Vernon Hills were ranked uh, the number one and two schools in Lake County. Um, on a variety of criteria that becomes more discriminating every year in Chicago Magazine. So uh, that was really good news and we want to congratulate, of course, our wonderful students, support staff, our teachers, and the administrators at our schools uh, and the board uh, for their work um, in really, you know, just creating two high schools at Rock and really meet the needs of students. So as you testify to every month, so that's uh, really great news. Okay, congratulations to Libertyville High School debate team on qualifying for the IHSA Team Academic Achievement Award. By accumulating a cumulative grade point average of 3.0 or higher during the season uh, last year. Uh, LHS sophomore Anna uh, Lagudi, uh, recognized in last year's IATE Best of Poetry and Prose competition as a two-time first place winner and an honorable mention recipient was chosen by Illinois Poet Laureate Kevin Stein is one of three Illinois students to receive a special merit award. The award recognizes winning poems that exhibit an appealing blend of craft and content, works that show students' poets um, rising above the mundane to establish, as Emerson says, an original relationship with the universe. Anna's work was analyzed and celebrated in an essay by Stein that can be found on the Bradley University Illinois Poet Laureate webpage. Vernon Hills High School senior Ian Swartz competed at the North American Irish Dance Championships this summer in Orlando, Florida, where he won first place in the senior mixed uh, Sealy competition. He also qualified as a soloist for the World Championships of Irish Dance that will be held in Dublin, Ireland in spring 2017. And I know uh, probably several board members are going to want to sign up to go on that trip, uh, I'm sure. Ian has been Irish dancing for over 11 years and trains with the Mullane Healy Godley Academy in Chicago. Uh, beacons are operational and all signage is in place at the newly installed crosswalk at Route 176 and Diamond Avenue in Libertyville. Thank you to the Village of Libertyville Public Works Department and the Libertyville Police Department for their support and hard work in making this important safety feature for our students and others in town in reality. And uh, we know that it will take a little while uh, for travelers on 176 to get used to slowing down there, uh, but uh, police are going to work with that and uh, certainly monitor that area. Congratulations to the VHHS winner and spring varsity athletic teams that qualified for the IHSA Team Academic Achievement Awards. Following teams achieved a cumulative, cumulative GPA of 3.0 or higher during the season last year. Girls basketball, girls bowling, boys bowling, competitive cheer, competitive dance, girls gymnastics, boys swimming and diving, girls water polo, boys volleyball, boys track and field, girls track and field, boys tennis, softball, girls softball, um, bass fishing, baseball, and badminton. Uh, last year, several junior and senior AP and 2D uh, drawing students in Allison Malloy's AP studio art class at Vernon Hills High School participated in the Memory Project. This nonprofit organization invites art teachers and our students to create portraits for youth around the world who have faced substantial challenges, such as neglect, abuse, loss of parents, and extreme poverty. VHHS was paired with children from an orphanage in Romania. Eight VHHS student artists created nine original portrait drawings and paintings for these children, which were delivered to the children in Romania this summer by the Memory Project. Fees to participate in this project as a school resulted in a collective financial donation among all participating schools of $4,120 to help support the children's therapy programs in the orphanages. Thank you to the VHHS students, Augustin Sandoval, Alex Kinderman, Alyssa Pasternak, Daria Portiskaya, uh, Julia Bernarski, Lauren Johnston, Sarah Kane, 
and Tiffany Arn for their artwork and for making these children feel valued, important, and beautiful from 1,000 miles away. And the following LHS winter and spring athletic teams qualified for the IHSA Team Academic Achievement Awards. These teams uh, achieved a cumulative GPA of 3.0 or higher during the season last year. In the winter season, girls basketball, boys basketball, girls bowling, boys bowling, cheerleading, dance, girls gymnastics, boys swimming and diving, and wrestling. And in the spring, baseball, boys gymnastics, girls soccer, softball, boys tennis, boys track and field, girls track and field, boys volleyball, boys water polo, and girls water polo. So congratulations to everyone, really great finish to last year and a great summer and a great start uh, to this year, just absolutely incredible. Uh, next up on the superintendent's report is certification of attainment of FY16 established performance recognition bonus criteria. Um, as the board and uh, many in the community are aware, as a component of the current teacher contract, which includes all teacher bargaining unit members, the board union agreed to an innovative uh, performance recognition bonus that provides the board an opportunity to recognize the collective excellence of our teaching staff in meeting and or exceeding minimum student achievement and student engagement beyond the school day qualifying criteria. Unlike merit pay, which is designed to motivate teachers to increase student achievement in the future, is only granted if student achievement increases are met and as part of the reg regular compensation stru structure, the performance recognition bonus acknowledges that we have an excellent teaching staff that has consistently produced high student achievement and high levels of student engagement beyond school day. As such, the performance recognition bonus provides bonuses over and above, above the regular compensation structure for meeting and or exceeding minimum student achievement and student engagement um, criteria. Also, unlike merit pay, which is typically paid only to individual teachers who increase student achievement, the performance recognition bonus is a collective bonus and thus recognize uh, the significant contributions that all teachers make to the success of students. And the board has extended um, that um, opportunity for, 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 for performance recognition bonus to um, support staff and administrators as well. In other words, if the minim minimum qualifying criteria are met or exceeded, all D128 teachers receive the bonus. So uh, to certify the results from this year, this is a rolling five-year average of our scores. Uh, the District 128 overall ACT composite score, the minimum qualifying criteria was 24.8. Happy to report tonight, although I think it's embargoed officially for a couple more days that um, we moved up again in ACT composite for the district, another point one this year, and we are now at 25.5, so we exceeded that criteria. Uh, the second criteria is percentage of students taking advanced placement examinations. Minimum qualifying criteria is 20.8, and we are at 32.5. The percentage of students scoring at three, four, or five on advanced placement exams is 89.9%. The minimum qualifying criteria was 87.7. Um, and I do want to make one note, as uh, we always do, that we have more than doubled the number of students taking advanced placement courses over the last 10 years. And the, uh, number four, percentage of students participating in one or more student activities and our athletic teams is at least one, 94.6. And that counts and doubles and triples, quadruples. So if you're in three sports and band, um, that actually counts four times, but the minimum qualified criteria is 90.2. As a result, I recommend that the board authorize a 1.5% performance recognition bonus payment to all eligible teachers, administrators, and education support staff. Um, and uh, if the board concurs with that tonight, um, we simply uh, will let the teachers know uh, that bonus is typically paid out the first Friday in December right after uh, Thanksgiving holiday. So, um, one note, uh, as many of you are aware, when we originally negotiated the contract, the, the old Prairie State Achievement Exam was part of that criteria. So we actually had five criteria. The state uh, obviously no longer uh, requires nor gives that test. Uh, and we're happy to report tonight that through the work of many people, um, our high school students are no longer going to be taking the PARC exam uh, either. Um, so we have four criteria. So the criteria has been modified from five uh, to four, but we've met all five, four criteria this year. So um, I don't really need a vote, just an acknowledgement or a consensus from you that you accept the criteria, and then I will let the staff know uh, tomorrow on uh, the bonus.
Any questions? Okay. Great job. Um, and just one other note on that, that um, that criteria has been examined by a number of districts because it's a performance-based um, criteria. So uh, next on the agenda is approval of FY17 uh, budget. So Pat, I don't know if you want to make any uh, leading comments or want to yes, present first. Why don't you present first? Uh, this evening we are presenting to you the final budget for fiscal year 17, which started on July 1, 2016, with the fiscal year end of June 30th, 2017. The budget uh, was adopted after uh, discussions with a number of groups, uh, a lot of hours spent with the Board of Education, going through the budget, the detail, comparing it to the previous year and making some modifications pretty much in the last two weeks at your request to trim the budget further. So the document before you will reflect what our spending plan and our revenue expectations are for this current school year. Um, the presentation before you will cover the legal requirements for budget adoption. We'll talk about uh, revenues and expenditures and then just a brief summary of the budget. As you know, a school district must adopt the budget in the first quarter of the fiscal year. With our fiscal year starting on July 1, we are required to have a budget in place by September 30th. In our case, um, we have uh, our adopted date as August 22nd, so we are ahead of uh, state requirements. Uh, prior to the adoption, a school board must place the tentative budget on display. And uh, on July 6th, we place the budget on display for our community and interested parties to review and comment on it. Uh, we also set a public hearing for the proposed budget, and the hearing was on August 8th, and we had a number of people in attendance and uh, providing their comments on School District 128 finances and the impact on their own tax bills. Um, also on August 7th, I'm sorry, also on July 7th, we had published a notice of public hearing and conducted the hearing as stated before. The budget before you is on a cash basis. When we do our audit and release our annual statements, they are on a modified accrual basis and currently we have auditors who are looking at what we did in fiscal year 17, getting ready also to release our annual budget, our annual report to you. Moving on to section two and review of the revenues and expenditures. The revenues and expenditures are presented in a format that is dictated and advised by the Illinois School Board of Education. ISBE releases the Illinois Program Annual Manual and by law we have to follow the structure that is specified in that manual. For us, revenues are derived from four sources, local, which is our main source of revenue, which includes our property taxes. We receive a small amount from corporate personal property replacement tax. We have local revenues from tuition fees, some interest earnings, though they are uh, significantly less than have been in previous years, and some of the other services that we provide to our students, including food services, uh, textbooks, <coughs> and student activities. Another source of fund is flow through money. District 128 gets very limited dollars. Those are just dollars that would come to us and they'll immediately go to another organization. In our case, we do not receive any state or federal flow throughs, but we do receive local flow throughs for IMRF seed all revenue. Uh, levy, sorry. Um, we also receive state revenues in the form either of a general state aid, which is unrestricted and can be used for anything that the Board of Education stipulates, and categorical aid, which is restricted in the sense that most of it is reimbursement for expenses that we've incurred, either for transportation or for special education services. The last source of revenue for School District 128 is federal revenues, and those once again can be restricted and unrestricted. Unrestricted are the title grants that we receive, uh, and restricted are the special education reimbursements that we receive from the state of Illinois uh, and the federal government. A quick review of where we are with our uh, revenues. Um, what you see before you is a comparison of budget to budget revenues. 
broken into main classifications here. Property taxes are our largest component of revenues that we receive, uh, followed by uh, other local revenues. Very little state aid, as I indicated, about a million, and this year we expect about a million point two. Categorical revenues and federal revenues. As stated before, with capital, uh, with property taxes being our largest source of revenue, you can see that 90% of all our revenues are derived from uh, property taxes. Um, this is very different compared to what you would see uh, in <coughs> school districts that are south of here, where majority of their revenues either come from the state or from federal governments. Our revenue also, once again, is broken into the different funds by uh, state, um, state board. We have to classify our revenues into various classifications and how the money is spent. Our largest fund is the educational fund. Majority of the money that goes in there is for instruction, support services, administration of schools. The next largest um, fund for us is the operation and maintenance, and that takes care of maintaining, repairing, and improving our buildings, as well as the cost of custodians, maintenance uh, of the facilities, and paying for all the expenses related to uh, facilities. A good note for School District 128 is that we will be paying off our debt service. This is bonds that were issued in 1997 uh, to build our second campus, Vernon Hills High School, as well as improvements to LHS. 20 years later, uh, on January 1, 2017, we'll be making our final payment on the debt service, um, and those bonds would be paid off. After that, the district will have no outstanding debt at all, which is remarkable. Uh, transportation, uh, this fund is basically to fund our transportation of buses for our regular students who come uh, to school each day uh, by bus. It is for our special needs students who use the buses or taxi cabs to go to various facilities and for our after-school activities, where our students are traveling from one campus to another school district. IMRF is for the Illinois Municipal Retirement Fund. It is for the pension uh, benefits, as well as for any prop payroll taxes that we have to pay to state and local uh, sources uh, for our employees. Working cash is a reserve account for the school district that we have used uh, to pay off our bond and interest levy that was abated in previous years. And over the past four or five years, the school district has abated $19 million of uh, tax revenues that it was entitled to, but chose not to do it to give its taxpayers relief. Our tort fund is basically to pay all our insurance premiums for non-medical or benefits to our employees. So these would be our liability insurance, it would be our workers' comp, it would be our uh, um, foreign, foreign um, insurance that we buy, foreign travel insurance for when our students are traveling overseas. Moving on to an overview of the expenditures. Once again, the expenditures are based on accounting standards that are issued by the State Board of Education and are classified in the eight objects that you see on the screen. Our main object is salaries, since we are basically a, a service-oriented uh, organization. Most of our expenses are in salaries, followed by benefits and purchase services. Purchase services include services that are rendered by personnel who are not our employees but are still providing services to School District 128, and that would include our custodians uh, who work for us uh, through Aramark, our food service, which is through Chartwells, our transportation service through Lakeside. Uh, we also pay for our auditors, our architects, and other consultants, as well as repair and maintenance and any other uh, uh, services that we use. Uh, the supply budget is a small budget line item, but it takes care of all the expendable items um, and uh, includes everything that is used in the classrooms, in the uh, buildings and grounds department, every area that uses supply. Uh, capital outlay is the acquisition of fixed assets or any additions to fixed assets, and any computer that we buy would go against capital outlay also. Uh, the other objects include debt and any tuition payments that we make for our special education students or our students that go to the vocational campus. Um, the other two items are rather small, and the budget for them is less than 1%. Okay, 
comparison of year to year budget from fiscal year 16 to 17 shows pretty much the same kind of uh, expenditure level, salaries being our largest, followed by uh, uh, employee benefits. And when we break those expenditures down uh, by percent, once again, you will see that salaries, employee benefits, and purchase service when combined equal to about 75% of our entire budget. Next year, when we will not have a debt payment, uh, you will see a slight difference in the percentages that go in each of those classifications. As you can see, 7.1% of the total budget is for uh, debt payment in here. A key note here is that the Board of Education has set aside $8 million for large capital items. That particular item is not reflected in this uh, classification that you see here uh, because that is very specifically for certain projects that you would uh, uh, look at over the next few months and uh, um, indicate whether or not we should move forward with other things that are needed to make those happen. Uh, moving on to capital exp by expenditures by fund, you will see once again, as stated before, that education is our largest fund, including all the instructional and related expenses for our students. The budget summary sheet uh, before you, I'll start out with what the budget is. Uh, sorry, the print is a little small. Well, can you blow that up a little bit? Okay. Our revenues total $82 million, majority of it, as indicated before, coming from uh, property taxes. Our expenditures, excluding the $8 million for large capital projects, is $90,349,000, resulting in a total deficit for the school district of $8.5 million. This does not include any transfers that will be made from the working cash to pay off the bond and interest fund, the levy for which was abated earlier uh, this uh, school year. And again, just to be clear on this, yes. on this page here, the bond and interest money is how much again? The total amount that we are going to pay for bond and interest is $6.2 million. Uh, One million is coming from our uh, tax levy. Four million dollars is coming from our reserves from working cash. And the balance, once again, is going to come from the fund balance that is in the debt service account. Okay, so again, a significant portion of the deficit spending you have shown there reflects that. That correct? is correct, okay. yes. All right. Moving on to the next sheet. Um, I took out capital projects and transfers. These are not the capital, large capital projects I spoke about, but as you will recall, in each of our budget annually, we have set aside monies to address large items that need to be uh, spent to make sure that our facilities are maintained and everything else that needs to be done to make sure the facilities and its occupants uh, uh, are providing, uh, are provided a safe environment. Uh, so this is about $3.8 million that we use, and it is set aside in the capital projects budget that we come to you each year for specific projects that we do. For instance, it could be roof repairs, it could be repairs to our um, bleachers, it could be repairs in the gymnasium, it could be repairs to our fields. So right, so just, just let me see the whole screen there. I want to make, make sure I understand the title. Is. What does it, it, it says, says budget okay. summary okay. excluding capital projects and transfers. So we took all the capital. All right, so do me a favor, could you do me a favor on those slides, in parentheses, make it okay. clear how much you're excluding there? Okay. Okay. I just want to make sure all these slides tie out. Right. Okay. So, in the slide that you saw before, we did not include transfers, so we were at $8.5 million in deficit. I've taken out $3.8 million out of the second sheet, which is the capital projects, to come with a deficit of 4.7. And that number, I thought the number was closer to 5. The projects, yes, some of them are included in here right, so because they've already been sort of uh, obligated to by either, got it. Uh, okay. you know, bids right. or... So again, just make sure that these slides, when all the numbers to tie, I don't want anybody to think there was a misrepresentation yeah. of the way we presented it kind of thing. So if, if you, it, all you're doing is you're saying, I took out the stuff that is essentially discretionary. We don't have to do the capital projects unless the roof leaks kind of thing. Okay. Right. We may yes. choose to do those anyway. Right. But if you could just make sure where it says excluding, I want to know exactly how much was excluded. Okay. So if they add that back in, it should tie the other slide. Okay. Right. 
Yeah, whatever it is, just to make sure that it's I will do that for your uh, <coughs> future reference. Yeah, it's before you go yes. on, so you all understand what happened in this one. Well, three point eight million dollars of our normal <coughs> capital. No, I, I agree with Pat. I want to make sure it's very easy to follow. Yeah. There's no misunderstanding uh, from anybody, and that it's well represented and communicated when we leave this room today. So, uh, can I see that? Can you blow that up again, please, Paul? And let me see the bottom. <coughs> so that 4.76 number yes. still includes the uh, debt payment or not? Uh, at this time it does, yes. So looking at this slide. It does not include the $4 million transfer. No, I don't want to Right. But it includes the debt payment. And then I have another slide that takes the debt service out. Okay. Because in essence, with the debt payment, this slide would essentially be flat. It is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So moving on to the next uh, summary. I have taken anything that is related to bond and interest out of this one, plus capital projects and transfers. So what has gone out of this chart is the $1 million for debt service in revenues, yep. uh, the $6.1 million for bond payment, coming up with a revenue uh, number of 80.7 or $80.8 .8 million, expenditures of $80.4 million. And as you said, it keeps a budget basically at revenues equaling expenditures. So we have a slight uh, increase or at least a slight adjustment to the expenditures and a small surplus of about four hundred thousand dollars. But that would assume you do no capital improvements to the building. Correct. Pre pretty close to enough. Everything would be taken out of there. Okay. Right. 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 So moving on, some budget highlights. From an instructional point of view, um, we will continue our focus on student engagement and innovative instructional strategies. And we are implementing year two of a digital learning strategy and each student, uh, every you, every freshman who came in got a new uh, Chromebook. And just to highlight there, I just want to yeah. make sure my high level thinking on this is yes. correct. The fees we are currently charging students for the DLS cover about half of the cost. That is correct. Okay. Yes. I just want to be clear on that. Yes. And I think it's important to note that by the time the students are done at the end of four years, the value of that is not $400 anymore. So the appreciated value, the appreciated value yeah. over time. But in, essence, but in essence, what we're doing is we're providing a freshman with a $400 device, so over the four years that they're here, they pay 200 or 400 Right, exactly. Right. I just want to be clear that we're not giving the people these, uh, these uh, think pads. Um, they're essentially covering at least half the cost, or about half the cost. Okay. Uh, some of facility highlights. Um, we are making some improvements to our um, HVAC system at Vernon Hills High School, keeping in mind that that is about 20 years old now. Uh, there's a, roofing, a roof replacement project ongoing at LHS every year. We've made uh, some roof replacement uh, processes in place. There's masonry and tuck pointing work that was done in the summer at both our buildings and will be continued next summer. And we continue to make improvements to the inst instructional spaces in our building to better, to better suit the needs of our students and our curriculum. So once again, in uh, 2017, we'll be paying off the bonds that we issued in fiscal year 97. The bonds were $48.5 million, of which about $16 million was not uh, taxed and was paid out of our reserves. We continue to look at operational efficiencies and are constantly looking at ways, and um, Apprentice uh, talked about it at the opening day, and surprisingly enough, uh, within a couple of hours, I had about four emails from people telling me how we could do some things that will result in savings. So, you know, people out there in our buildings are aware of the fact that we are looking uh, to cut back on our budget without impacting our instructional program. We are currently working on our long-term projections, and we will bring those to you in November. Uh, and we have the large capital needs items to discuss with you at a future meeting. And as stated before, we have set aside $8 million, should we choose, 
to move in that direction and start the projects this year so that we do not have to amend the budget. Yes, and just yes. Uh, again, I, I think so we're clear. That transferred money came from the transportation account. That is correct. That is it something that is from required the transportation right account. It was money that was sitting in the transportation account because the levy was generating more than we needed. Right. So that money was transferred by the board uh, into the account to be used for capital projects. At, at least that was the thinking at that time. Um, moving forward, correct? That is correct. And the reason why there were these surplus funds in the education and the transportation fund was. Uh, at one time, we had talked about, uh, uh, with the previous board, the possibility of having our own uh, transportation fleet for which we would need a garage as well as purchase of buses. At this point, that is not feasible, so we're looking to use those funds elsewhere. Right. So uh, with this budget presentation, um, our request is that the Board of Education approve the budget as presented. So we can file it with the appropriate authorities and the State Board of Education uh, within the timelines directed by ACV. Okay, so let, let me make a, a couple high-level comments. Number one, this is um, now I think the, either the fourth or fifth uh, presentation we've seen on the budget. We've spent the better part of three full meetings on various budget um, topics, I think, some of which were very extended. Um, some of which were very engaging. So uh, we will probably not get into nitty gritty details tonight. So I just want everybody to understand that's because we've spent a lot of time on this in, in previous uh, weeks and months. Uh, number two, at a high level, to the extent that the budget is increasing, um, it's really increasing because of contractual commitments either to employees or vendors. Um, all other spending, um, essentially all other spending has been held flat to last year. Okay, so we went through, I think, at least two sessions of cuts in our budget discussions. Um, honestly, we had originally asked the administration when they came in with their first budget proposal to hold all spending not under contract to be um, basically within the guidelines of inflation. All right, anybody that's been reading the paper knows inflation is, I think, 0.07%. Um, and I think the uh, initial budget proposal was, you know, somewhere between zero and one percent. Um, we have since taken that back to zero, okay? Um, so for all the taxpayers in the community, um, because of the tax caps, your taxes can only go up in aggregate 0.07 percent, okay? That does not mean your individual tax bill will not go up. It does not mean your individual tax bill will go down. With all the changes in assessments, and oh, by the way, I understand everybody in Lake County got a blanket 7% increase in assessment, um, if you've been reading the papers lately. Uh, whether your individual tax bill goes up or down just depends on how much your house is assessed relative to everybody else's and how it all shares the pool, okay? Um, but, you know, again, please correct me if I'm wrong, but taxing bodies all taxing bodies like ours next year will frankly not be able to get any kind of significant increase in revenue. Okay. So again, to the extent that any of our taxes go up or down, it's just a matter of the bubble moving, okay, to a different homeowner. All right. Um, it's not really because all of the taxing bodies are getting a lot more money because you're not able to when there's no inflation. Okay. Um, so I do want to emphasize though that we have held the spending flat. Um, we've made a lot of cuts. I will tell you there are only, um, uh, I don't know, uh, there's at least one thing we haven't cut, uh, and that is programs, okay? Uh, and at this point, we don't intend to. Um, we don't believe we are ready to. Uh, we don't really feel we're in a position to do that uh, yet. So we will be commissioning, uh, I'll call it commissioning, uh, a group of people to look at everything we do from top to bottom and we're going to figure out what we have to do, what we like to do, and what we want to do um, and, and start, start to set the stage for, um, you know, the future where we have some projections that, frankly speaking, are not favorable, okay? Um, but I do want to emphasize we have not made any decisions to cut. We don't plan to make any decisions to cut in this year. Uh, we do plan as we go through the year to look at our revenue forecast, um, and it is just that, a forecast. Um, I think 
based on history, there is some reason to believe that revenues could come in a little bit stronger than what we what we're forecasting, although I will say over the last couple of years, we've really kind of narrowed that gap and we're getting much, much better, I think, at calling our revenues. I think, and likewise, we will continue to monitor our spending um, and look at our spending in light of our revenue. Um, and wherever we can, we're gonna to continue to find, you know, what we think are responsible ways to save, either by, um, you know, maybe not doing capital things that we don't feel we need to do, um, or by, you know, finding other opportunities, okay? So, uh, the process doesn't end here. Um, you know, it's a milestone. We will approve, or at least put the budget up for approval, um, but I want everybody to understand this is an ongoing process um, that we will engage in, I'm sure, for the entire year, okay? Uh, and then we're already uh, planning to set the stage for the budget discussions, which would kick off here, you know, shortly after the winter holidays, and, and uh, to set the stage again, okay? So, uh, just a couple of other comments. So, based on our discussion with the board and, and working with the administration, Pat's really uh, highlighted the key points, but just to bring it kind of all together here at the end, um, the board has discussed looking at um, uh, additional revenue through an increase in fees for the people that are currently using um, the system. Dr. Fleming has done a pretty extensive study of uh, student fees. Uh, in the area that uh, we live and work in here. And um, there is, we haven't touched fees here as long as I've, it's my 12th year, and we haven't touched fees for 12 years. Yasmin, you've been here longer, it's probably been longer than that. So uh, the board will review that and um, we'll give them some numbers and make some recommendations. So you've got revenue on one side. And then um, Pat talked about um, looking at efficiency, so we'll be working uh, really closely with the union and the support staff and the administrators um, to look at all of our major cost centers uh, without looking specifically at programs to see where we can become more efficient and we can shape some dollars and then at a higher, broader level, uh, we'll just be looking at the district as a whole down the line uh, and the possibilities um, there as well. Um, had an extensive conversation with uh, all the employees of the district on district opening day um, because we wanted to make sure that uh, they're on speed and they're under they understand you know why we were why we are where um, why we're where we're at uh, at this point um, and then uh, some of the steps that we're going to uh, work together on uh, moving forward to uh, address the problem. This is, um, I would venture to say, a problem in every school district in the state of Illinois right now because approximately 75% of any school district's budget is people because, as Yasmin pointed out, we're a service, um, we're a service organization. Um, the result of that is if the employees are getting any raises, then those raises have to match whatever CPI might happen to be at the time if you're going to break even because it's very difficult to cut the other 25% of the budget enough to make that difference. And if you did, okay, these young people sitting here wouldn't want to be going to school here. Uh, and parents would not be, want to be sending them there. So it's really a three-prong approach, and uh, we've already started that conversation. And uh, to the credit of our union, which has always been uh, really good to work with here, uh, they're going to be part of that process with us, and so will the administrators and so will our support staff because we do everything together here. Um, we're all in this together. And uh, we'll take this on as a challenge uh, and we'll uh, work with the board and we'll manage, um, we'll manage our way through this. Okay. Um, so is there a motion to approve the- Chris, one more yeah. question. Yeah. Of the contractual obligations, how large is that dollar amount? So if we held everything else flat, what was that increase of just the contractual part? The dollar amount? The dollar. That vendor contracts or salaries or both? All of them. But probably more of the salary because that's that makes up the largest portion. It's about two million dollars on salaries. Which is the lion's share of that? Okay. And then yes. other contracts are relatively small compared to that. Okay. 
All right, so is there a motion to approve the budget? If there's further discussions, we can do it after the motion. Uh, so uh, approve the budget as presented. Second. All right, any further discussion? Yeah, one more question. So we saw the budget presented in three different scenarios of revenues and expenditures. Which one are we voting on? We're voting on the first one. Plus the eight million dollars set aside for large construction projects, okay. which has already been funded by uh, transfer of funds. Let me make sure I'm clear though. It's one of the slides up there, right? Yes. Okay. Again, I want to make sure the slides are perfectly clear on that. Okay. It is the first slide plus eight million dollars. That's why. That's why I asked that yes. question. Make sure that slide reflects the eight million dollars. Yes. Right. Okay. Now let me be clear on the eight million dollars. Okay. So there's that eight million dollars in the budget. Correct. But to be perfectly clear, there is not a single project that has been approved by this board attached to that eight million dollars. That is correct. Okay. Yes. I want to be, I want to be right. clear on that. So we are we are putting that money aside in the budget. <coughs> that is related to discussions we've had on pools and gyms and all these other things, none of which at this point are approved. Correct. Okay. Are we all clear on that? Provides flexibility. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. even though that money is in the budget, we have not authorized to spend any of that. And then $8 million is going to come from new tax revenue. It's existing. That $8 million came from existing money that was sitting in the transportation account as reserves. So it's not new dollars. So said differently, if we chose to do none of the capital projects that we have previously discussed, that $8 million would not be spent. And essentially from a spending perspective, it would be $8 million of favorability mm -hmm. in this year's budget. Correct. So the eight million is basically all of the deficit shown on that slide. No, because it also because it's not in there. No, yeah. It was not put in there so that it wouldn't screw the numbers. It, it's one it's way tough comparison anyway. When you start moving that, it just looks odd to me. Okay. All right, but again, I want to make sure. Let's go back to that page. Okay. Now, in essence. This page should reflect the last budget that we looked at in our detailed discussion. That is correct, yes. Okay. So can you just make sure these numbers tie to exactly that? Yes. Right? right. Yes. Because I want to make sure that it's really, again, I don't want there to be any possibility of there being any perception of any lack of transparency. No. This is the budget that is on display, plus the $8 million. So when you go look at it, yeah. It is there. Okay. But this is the dollar amounts for both revenues and expenditures. Okay. Equal to that amount. Okay, are we clear on that then? Does that make sense? Pat, one other point to that, and then the bond payment, the final bond payment, yes. okay, is coming from existing dollars. It's not creating an additional liability. Well, we collected $1 million in the previous tax levy for the bond and interest, but everything else beyond the $1 million, which is another $5.1 million is coming from our reserves. reserves. So yes. 4 .1 that's, a one, that's a one-time when I ask right. you that's a one-time. Using our reserves, the majority of the money is reserves. Which again, I just want to make sure that's clear yeah. too. That's a yeah. one-time event. I, I think what's, uh, what can be confusing is when you look at this, if you think of a, a traditional budget, it's revenues and, and right. expenditures, but since this is sort of a cash basis budget, if we're spending out of our savings, if I saved up to put an addition on my house, that those dollars are then reflected in the spending, but not in the revenue side. So what seems in many cases as a deficit spending is really spending out of cash reserves and or savings to do something that we intentionally desire to do, such as capital yeah, projects, yeah. such as at, at hand plan to do, or such as uh, pay off the, the debt, the, the last payment on our, our, our bond without taxing the, the, the people in the community. So those were intentional things that causes it to look negative, but it's really, those are planned one-time things that we intentionally did to spend reserves, to spend our savings. Again, let's be clear, the $19 million that we made in the last two years was a conscious decision on our part to spend down our reserves to pay these one-time expenses. That's okay. correct, yes. And we did that because essentially that was $19 million worth of tax relief. Okay. 
not relief in the sense that it was it was um, it wasn't a real reduction in taxes, but it was well, I mean, it was tax money we didn't take that we otherwise would have taken. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? All right. If not, roll call, please. Arthur. Nay. Asson. Aye. Kelly Powell. Aye. Rudy. Aye. Lundstedt. Aye. Luce. Aye. No, I'm All right, motion carries. Okay. Okay, uh, Pat, I've just got a couple of other things, believe it or not, on the superintendent's report. Uh, the board will note that uh, we had four FOIA requests this month. Uh, they are accounted for in your packet. And finally this evening, uh, we have an outstanding outdoor ed program at uh, Vernon Hills. And uh, since we had met last time and school has started, and uh, Mr. Maselli has had the opportunity to actually meet with his students, uh, they would like to take um, a field trip um, canoeing and camping experience in, uh, on the Wisconsin River. And they will go from 9-3 to uh, 9-4. Um, we have uh, sufficient, uh, sufficient sponsors, two adults for 12 students. They'll be going to Spring Green, uh, Wisconsin. Uh, like all field trips, the students will uh, pay for the trip uh, to go up there. So we just wanted to let the board know tonight uh, that they will be going unless you um, have reason to believe that they shouldn't go. So we recommend that. Uh, you can't vote because it's not on the agenda. So um, yeah, uh, all you need to do is again give me a, a nod that it's okay or not, and then uh, we'll let Jerry go. It's just the timing of starting school, getting the kids there, and having the opportunity right at the beginning of school. So it didn't meet our normal um, cycle. So are you, we all okay with that? Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Pat, that concludes my report. All right. Thanks. All right. Anybody from the public who would like to speak? I really got excited there for you. No, Pat, I thought to myself, they listen. So I thought. Well, I looked at that eight million bucks that's sitting there and basically saying, um, is this set okay? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the way I look at it is you've got an $81.7 million budget, operational budget, and you've got eight million bucks that you're approving that you're going to approve somewhere during the year to build either a new gym or both, the gym and a pool. Am so I sure reading that, that right? Just for the record, I'm not sure that assumption is valid. It is what I said. Okay. It's got I'm, not, gonna sit, I'm not going to sit here and have anyone tell me that this is some backhanded way to approve some money. That money has not been approved to be spent. Okay. And it may never other. be approved to be spent. I honestly just do not know this evening. Yeah. Okay. So who will be involved? Yeah, Jerry, just do your name and address for the record, all right? Jerry Verbaten, and uh, I've lived in uh, I lived in Libertyville for 38 years. <clears throat> I sent two boys through the school, and uh, it did me well. You prepared them well for college and kept their heads screwed on straight. And to you young people sitting over here, you make us proud. You're you're absolutely a joy to listen to and realize that, my God, this school is kicking out some awfully fine product. So my hat's off to you. Thank you. <clears throat> now, <laughs> the question is, uh, I live at 319 Cary Chill Circle in Libertyville. I lived there for 38 years. Sent uh, two kids through the high school. I've got a granddaughter over at uh, at um, <clears throat> Libertyville High School, she's a pretty good soccer player. So, but sh so far, I'm uh, very pleased with how she's progressing. Um, one of the things in 2014, what started was I got a big tax increase. And uh, tax increase shocked me a little bit, so I said, geez, I better find out what's cooking. As a civics lesson, okay, I suggest that what you do 
as you attend meetings like this later in life when you're adults and you have your own families. But I went to the meetings and I found out basically what was happening. Uh, and a couple of things that, that shocked me a little bit was um, at that time the, uh, the school, the district, was operating with about a hundred and twenty-five million dollar surplus. Now you know what a surplus is? That's the savings, that's that's that money that somehow the taxpayers paid, but we're sitting there, and basically what it does, it allows for capital expenditures relatively large in nature, and we're talking 26 million, 25 million for pool and, and gymnasiums without taking it to the voters for their either review or their approval. So at that time, that surplus was 125. Now, through the, um, through the last two years, um, we worked and we got abatements, and I applaud you for that. I mean, abatements say, money that they should have taxed, but they held back. And I think they listened to us. And that's a lesson in working together. But <clears throat> then all of a sudden, this past June, July, when I got my tax bill again, I got kicked three and a half percent. Again, now think about this. I'm visually seeing a surplus of 125 million and by the way that surplus has been in 2014 it was 125 million in 2015 it was 141 million as identified in newspaper articles in 2016 it was 122 million then lo and behold the article that said we're going to overspend and we're going to drive this thing right in the hole Remember that one? I don't know if you saw it. But that thing was sitting at 81 million. And now when I look at it today and pull the figures out of the budget, I'm looking at about a hundred and three million dollar surplus, and you're gonna get another tax charge in September when I pay the tax bills. So I'm saying the surplus is still sitting upwards of about 103 to 125 million dollars. Of which it looks like we're accounting for some of that in the potential, and I say potential only, of a new pool or a new gym, which we'll review and be looking at, hopefully, with some cooperation and some interchange between taxpayers and your school board and your administration. Now the headset throughout this has been, holy man, if you're giving an idea, what's happening is that on a tax bill on homes in Libertyville that are sitting at, uh, let's say they're between the 6,000 to an 600,000 to an $800,000 range. A young couple coming in to buy it from somebody like me, an old guy who built the home, paid off the home, and wants to live in a home and die in a home, can't. I'm being taxed out of my home. So the result is you get a young couple that comes in. Young couple comes in and looks at this thing and says, oh, you're charging $600,000 for this home. Oh my God, when I compare the taxes to this, now I'm paying another $1,500 a month for taxes. So what it says to you as a young couple, pay $1,500 in taxes first before you pay dollar one on your mortgage. I can honestly say to you that my taxes are greater than the, the existing mortgage I had when I sold it when I closed off my own. That's how much taxes have gone out of line. Okay, it continues to go up. Now listen. There comes a point of diminishing returns. The news is good schools, 
high taxes. I used to laugh and giggle at other people in other communities. They look at and say, where do you live, Libertyville? And oh, by the way, you live in Libertyville? Wow, you guys got high taxes. But I'd say, but I got good schools, right? Now we're at this level right now where there's a point of diminishing returns because you know what's happening now? What you're seeing is, you're seeing people coming in, okay, and we're looking at a tax bill that we can't afford, we're being taxed out of the homes, or it's a real, real push when you wanna send kids through college and pay those taxes. But the point is, you've got that, and on top of it, what we've got is we've got less demand because people are walking away from our real estate because the taxes are too high in the community. You know, I'll tell you, I saw a letter written by a fellow by the name of um, Bruce Allen. Bruce wrote a letter and said, oh my God, I've got a home and uh, I've dropped the price on the home now, $85,000, I'm still not selling it, I've only had four showings, the number one issue in not closing the business is taxes. People are walking away from it. So as a community, as a community, and I, and I, and by the way, Mr. Terry Wettler, I hope you're listening. This is a community problem and not just a school problem. We've got situations where what's happening is the homes, and there's a lot of homes in that range, okay, are being forced to drop their prices. Not a little, but a lot. What is that gonna to mean to taxes for schools? They're gonna go down. Okay, so we're asking in all cases, try to become efficient, control your costs, because at the expense, we need it for the community's sake. And not just for my sake, but it's happening throughout. So please, please, you know, you, you know what it's been like for the last couple of years. I mean, everybody says, hey, he's coming back. I'm sorry, but you know, all I want to do is get some answers. And it's a civic lesson, be involved because you can affect change, positive change. I'm talking about good teachers. Don't sacrifice the quality of your product. Do it more efficiently and look for ways to cut costs out of the equation. That's okay. all I'm asking. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else who might speak? Hi, my name is Anna Gray. I live at 1020 Ashley Lane in Libertyville. I am the proud parent of uh, a LHS grad, 2013 grad, who was extremely well prepared. Marina, thank you very much to be a full scholarship college kid. And I have a current junior at LHS. Um, I am fully supportive of you guys funding a pool for the, for the high school, even though I know good and well that my water polo son will never spend one minute in that pool. Um, I want it there for the kids who come behind my kids. Somebody else did this for us to have the facilities that are there now. We have a 7% increase on our taxes in our home right now. We just bought into the community in 2009. And um, one of the big things that attracted us to this community was the school. Um, you may guess from my accent, I'm not from here originally, I'm from Texas. Yeah, our taxes are a whole lot lower there. And everybody you can afford to has their children in private schools because the public schools have been abandoned. Good schools cost money. Good facilities at the school cost money. I'm gonna tell you, my high schooler, who had my, my graduate who had a wonderful experience at LHS, I remember him coming home one day and saying, and this may be an exaggeration, Marina, I know the kids sometimes do that, but he said there was a thermocline of stuff that when you'd swim in the pool, you'd see stuff. It's an old pool, it's a tired pool, it's a broken pool, and it needs to be replaced. We need, we need new equipment for these kids. It's curriculum. Every child in that school goes to that pool. This money would affect every single child, and I implore you guys to build a new pool. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Jerry, I don't need your notes. <laughs> Tim Anderson, 821 Bartlett Terrace, Libertyville, Illinois. 
I first got one, well, a graduate of class of 61 from LHS. In 1974, there was a referendum to build a second high school out on the corner of Old School and St. Mary's Road. I was part of the citizens committee that thought that was probably a bad idea because that was all going to be forest preserving, there'd be no one to go to it. Well, that referendum failed. And from that point on, almost 42 years, I've been a watchdog on what the school board does with their expansion. In 1990, I was asked to be on a committee to decide how do we handle the future overcrowding. In 1990, it was decided we had to expand. The decision was to build one school, make LHS bigger. I was a minority, I said, no, it won't, it won't pass unless you build a school in Vernon Hills. Well, history proved me right, it failed. And then you built the school in Vernon Hills and you have two schools now, which was the proper answer. The question is, what does it cost to run these schools and maintain them? So looking at your own numbers off your own website, and you look at your salaries, and you look at your administration, there are materially misleading issues. You publish on the website all of the salaries, and you have a category, this is what it looks like, and you have a category for other administration. Well, in the 2014-2015, the most current one you have, so the 15-16 year has not been published, and the 16-17. Now, the 16-17 salaries could be published because they exist, so you could update these by two years. But if you go back just two years ago, you have eight people listed as administrators. But if you look at the category of vacation days, you'll notice teachers don't get vacation days because, in fact, they get two months off in the summer. Administrators get vacation days. You have 11, under, 11 other individuals that get vacation days, and if you look at the job description from the district office, you find many of them. Some are sitting out here at the table, but you list them as teachers. You list packages of $2,250,000 across 11 people as teachers, and they're clearly administration. So your cost of administration is out of line. Basically, if you're taking the two outliers on this, two people that are retiring, you showed one having a salary of $9,000, but the next category was retirement <coughs> enhancement, $46,000. And no vacation days because I'm retiring. I don't need a vacation, I'm, I'm done. You're presenting false figures. You've been asked time and time again on your budget to do what every other budget reflects. You have a budget, which is a plan, and then you have actual. You do not give the community, the public, the ability of what you actually spent. So you project a deficit. But remember, since the referendum was passed, for the next 10 years, I had a perfect attendance at all of the school board meetings and all of the F and F meetings. I know where those skeletons lie. One of the great rumors on this gym is the fact that it was always in the plans. This gym that you have a proposal for was never in the plans. It was never in the plans. As a matter of fact, there was a spaces committee uh, of the community in 2002 that came and dealt with the question. And the whole community did not have a second gym in their plans in 2002. It was never part. That is a legend myth that it's part of the original plan. If you look what you projected on the, uh, the gym proposal that you have on the website, to give you an example, you have broken out, you have a dance studio. You have a dance studio. You just never put the floor in. The dance studio will be the airspace above the existing team locker room. You've had it for eight years. All you had to do was put the bridge over and put down the dance floor. You've got the ceiling, the floor, and the walls. You probably have the electrical. For eight years, you've had a dance studio. It's like putting the carpeting above the garage and creating an apartment. You've already had it. You haven't used it. You've denied the fine arts people for eight years a dance studio. 
put the floor down. The top of the line, I made a phone call today, checked it out. The top of the line floor for 4,200 square feet of a dance floor with the cushion, the extra plywood screwed each way so the floor won't float, plus the polished hardwood floor, under $50,000. That leaves you over two and a quarter million dollars to put a bridge across. That bridge is better than the bridge to nowhere in Alaska. You have misrepresented. As you break out your cost on this gym, you show that the dance studio, which by the way, is really just a dance floor and a bridge, you show 1,344,000. You show gym and locker room at 3,000, 3,572,425. These are your figures. But then you show a weight room, a 4,500 square foot weight room. 4,500 square feet. You want to count the distance across here, count the ceiling tiles and go that way and see how big a weight room that is? It's an enormous weight room. Colleges would be proud to have a weight room that big. But then the fun one is, Connecting hallways, 1,172,650 for connecting hallways. Look at your own map, your own drawing. The connecting hallway is the space between two walls. One wall of the field house you've already built, the, uh, the uh, pool and the locker room, then the new walls for the gym, and you've got a million one for a hallway that will be built by default you're going to spend over $600 a square foot to put some type of flooring on the concrete. That really is a path paved with gold. These numbers that you present are just erroneous. The budget, you've never given us the actual. Now remember, I came to those board meetings. Every year, woe is we, we're going to have a deficit. And every year, whoa, we lucked out. We didn't spend everything we budgeted, which is why we have a surplus. Everyone else's budget, a business, their church, or any other community or organization belong to, shows actual. Okay, so... Uh, so what I'm suggesting is, please quit giving us fraudulent numbers. But it's no longer your fault, Pat. It's no longer the administration's fault. It's that old line, shame on you, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. After 10 continuous years, shame on the community behind me and shame on the community that's watching this. You have been complicit and complacent. You've not been involved. You haven't looked at the numbers. You've trusted. You've been given false numbers and false associations, fraudulent numbers for over 10 years. It is your fault. Get involved. Help these people do a better job. Eventually, you're going to deal with the pool, which is needed. There is no need for a gym. There's a want. There's always been this want. But start dealing with real numbers. Give the public, when you present a budget, give them what you actually spent. As Jerry pointed out, you're running surpluses, 100% more than you're actually spending. Think about that, 100% more. You could take and levy nothing for one whole year and still keep this school going at the rate you're going. If you want to save money, when you look at the, by the way, the top two administrators are paid more than any one of the 50 governors in this United States are, have a salary greater than any congressman, senator, speaker of the house. Their salaries are greater than any Supreme Court justice. Their salaries are greater than the vice president of the United States. That's okay. what you're okay. paying for. So, Pat, what we're asking you, and we're asking you to get involved, it's your responsibility. Quit being complicit and quit being complacent and right. ask them to start giving us the actual cost. Okay. Thank you very much. You bet. Okay. Not, it's not taken sincerely, but I'll take it as a thank you. No, that's not true. Um, okay. Anybody else like to speak? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And in the interest of time, I am going to try to limit this. Uh, it is supposed to be three minutes. I'll be sure. I'd let these other guys go eight to ten minutes. So. Well, I know they didn't use up all the time because I won't need that much. Uh, my name is Frank Berardi. I live on 1414 Reduso. 
have had uh, three daughters attending the schools, and I've had three grandchildren attending the schools. Um, you can tell that the community, and I know all of you here, have suffered greatly with the taxes we're paying. There's no question. I won't belittle that. I do know that Lake County, in the whole state of Illinois, has the highest taxes of any other county by about a thousand dollars on average. That's ridiculous. Why? There's plenty of good counties around. We pay the most taxes. My purpose here is not to outline why the taxes are high or to complain about it, because enough of that has been done already. What I want to do is present you a couple of suggestions and recommendations from our small community group to move forward and make some solutions. We don't want to look at this as if we don't have any obligation to try to solve the problem, because we do. We all do. My first recommendation involves the fact that it's taken, as Jerry outlined, three or four meetings for us to come and actually question you and ask hard questions. It's no fun doing this. What I'm suggesting is that you recondition this board and put in place a community ombudsman that formally becomes a part of the board. This would be people who are actually diverse in nature, in age, economics, sex, you, you name it. Doesn't have to be a lot of people, maybe three or four people, to have as part of your board to sit in on your meetings and ask the hard questions that you've had asked by us. We don't want to do this for a sideline. There's something about this board, and maybe it's true of most boards. I've been in business my whole life. And you get caught up in what you're talking about, and people don't want to ask the hard questions. But you know what? Those taxpayers, are the money it's their money that's being spent. So hopefully they would be able to ask you the hard questions. You know, you're representative of the people you voted on, and I know you're not paid. But that doesn't mean that once you get on the board, the board has a way of getting groupthink, and you need some ongoing questions to be asked. So that's my first request. The second request involves what we talked about in terms of expenses for uh, personnel and teachers. And as Tim mentioned, you've got some high-paid people. So I'm recommending that you take the five top administrators and you freeze their salaries. I'll repeat that. We're asking that you take the five top administrators in the board and you freeze their salaries. Now, that's not a lot of money, truthfully. I pay more taxes than what that would cost the board. But it sends a message to people that you mean business. You're serious about this and you're willing to walk the talk and you're willing to cut your own salaries, or at least, not cut them, but at least retard any increases. And it sends a message for the future negotiations you have to do. And it does let people know that you're not just talking about it, but you're willing to pay the price in your own lifestyles. So those are my two requests. And I'd like to have a written response from this board in 30 days as to exactly what you're going to do about those two requests. My only question to you is 30 days enough to get back to me on what you're going to do about them? Well, we'll consider it. Uh, no, I'd like, to, I'd like to know if 30 days is a good enough amount of time to get back and write up exactly what you're going to do about those two requests. Uh, honestly, I would think not, uh, because within the next 30 days we'll only, we'll only meet once. So how much time do you need? I, I really don't know. 45 days? I don't know. Now, okay. I'm not looking. So, so we, we, we I, 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 I'm serious about a response. I'm not, I'm not just, you know, I don't want to make a recommendation and it goes off into some no. so place. We, I, I'd I, like I, to hear what the I, board response is. I will to personally that. make sure that we respond to your requests. I'm just not able tonight to commit to the timeline. For okay. That's, okay, that's but, fair but enough. You have my word that we will respond. Okay, great. Okay. And I know we'll see you again, and I don't want you to come and say you never responded. So I promise you that we will respond. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. That's it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Good evening. Uh, Steve Mitchell, 
14645 South Somerset Circle in Green Oaks. Um, I want to give the board and the administration a little positive feedback for once. Um, I've been in this community for 28 years. One of the reasons I chose this community, and I think many folks who are here chose this community, is because of the value and the excellence that the school district brings. I've had three children, last who graduated last year, um, have the privilege of participating in um, not only in the academic excellence, but the extracurricular and the athletic excellence that um, you folks deliver uh, for us. And I think you need to be reminded that there is value and that those kids excel and are prepared for their college experience and life experience going further. Many of the comments uh, brought here this evening, um, I, I don't disagree with, but I would also recommend and, and, and comment back to the uh, students here from a civics lesson, your tax bill has a dozen different line items on it, the high school district being one of those. In business, we look at spending as a return on investment. And I would argue without question, the one item on, the, on our tax bill and my tax bill that I would never question the return on the investment is what we spend for our high school district. It is tangible, it is measured, it is reported, and I wish other agencies that collect our money would do the same. So I commend the board for continuing the standard of excellence and the administration for following through and delivering that. One other aspect I would just comment on with respect to the building, um, I think the board and the administration appreciates the integration of excellence in facilities with excellence in education. I think the um, upgrades to the facilities that have been described are needs-based. Some of us have participated in many of those meetings and understand the vetting that this board goes through to understand and really question the value of many of those projects. Um, this particular project has been well vetted, has been well understood, has been valued engineered. I would hope that the board and the administration will continue through with approval. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Anyone else? Okay, uh, I'm gonna make just a few comments and I do not intend for this to be a dialogue, but there are a few things I wanna correct. Um, number one, let me be clear, in all of the budget discussions we have had this year, uh, and there have been at least three full meetings on this topic. All of those discussions have focused on what we actually spent last year and what we were requesting to spend this year, okay? Now, um, that has been somewhat of a change in philosophy versus some prior years where oftentimes we did discuss what was budgeted last year and what is requested in the following year. But this year, our discussions were essentially exclusively focused on that, okay? So, if we could, Let's post that on the website, okay? It has been discussed publicly. It was discussed publicly at the hearing, I believe, okay? And at least one other meeting, so I just want to be clear. It's been, public, it's been publicly presented what we spent and what we're requesting next year, okay? Um, second, and actually I meant to start with this one. Um, we actually agree with a lot of what was said tonight. I think every one of us here is a Vernon Hills or Libertyville resident. We feel, most of us, uh, we feel your tax pain, okay? We feel your property value pain. We feel exactly the same pain. So if there's anyone out there that thinks we don't feel it and we don't discuss it, I would stand to differ, okay? I think we feel it, honestly, as much as anybody. Uh, second, I do want to correct again. Uh, and I've done this on a regular basis, so if nothing else, I think I'm at least consistent in my response to this. Um, I, I, I know for a fact we as a board would disagree with the fund balances as stated, okay? Uh, and let me, it, it may not be that we, we disagree with how much money is in the bank on any given amount of time, but let me just clarify for everybody what we as a board, and anybody that disagrees, feel free to chime in, what a, re what a, what a reserve fund is, okay? We look at res the reserve funds as being whatever our total fund balances are, and we take out of that what we call early taxes, okay? That being money we have received already to pay the coming year's expenses, okay? Now, 
There may be others that have a different philosophical approach to that, and I respect that. Okay? I just don't personally believe that money I have received today for an obligation that I know I will incur tomorrow is considered reserve funds. Okay? So it is the philosophy of this board not to treat those as reserve funds. We treat as reserve funds essentially those funds in the accounts that are not in any way, shape, or form encumbered or planned for known upcoming expenses. Okay? And therein lies the reason why you hear numbers like 120 million or 140 million, uh, oftentimes reported publicly. And I think when we've discussed it, if you look at our fund balances at the end of May, uh, which is when really we haven't received those early taxes yet, those numbers are more in the 80 to 85 million dollar range. Okay. Um, and last but not least, I'm just going to restate what I stated before. None of the large capital projects have been approved. Okay. I don't know tonight whether any of them will be approved. Informally polling the board, my sense is most would not. Okay, so that is not a final answer. There's still a lot of due diligence, which we plan to do, uh, but I just want to make sure everybody is perfectly clear we have not made a decision to do any of those projects. Nor have we agreed to any numbers that have been presented exactly. associated. Yeah. I mean, with let's those be projects. clear. Let's be clear on what those numbers were. Okay, those numbers were: we had an idea on what to do, we had a concept that we all liked. How many of us have built a house and done all those things? Where the first set of plans we reviewed were not what we what we ended up building. Okay, and with respect to the gym and the hallway and some of those, we've had no more than one discussion. That was the first time we had that concept presented. Okay. We've certainly not taken any action on that, and you know, uh, the public is certainly invited to any and all those discussions as we go forward. Okay, so I just want to correct um, some of those statements. All right. Um, any other comments? Okay. All right. Uh, moving on to the consent vote agenda. Uh, again, reviewed in detail um, earlier this month uh, in the committee. If I could ask for. Um, a motion to approve the consent vote agenda. So moved. Second. Uh, let me hold on. I want to just check one thing here. Okay. Uh, is there a second? Yeah. All right. Second. All right. I want to make one clarification point here on this one. Uh, item B, special board meeting minutes. Um, recall in that meeting there was a request for public comment. There was none. That was the review of the budget. Okay. Uh, we know we had plenty of public discussion in that meeting. It was not in that public comment section. I just want to make sure we're all clear that that's how it's documented. You will see that documented in the F and F minutes for the following month. Okay. Um, so I just want to make sure that we're clear on that because there was plenty of discussion that night. Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Batson. Aye. Jelly Polly. Aye. Curry. Aye. Lundstedt. Aye. Luce. Aye. Mauer. Aye. Archer. Aye. All right, motion carries. Program and personnel, Chairperson Maurer. Okay, we have uh, two items. The first is we have two educational tour requests. So we'll take for a motion to approve those as presented. So moved. Second. Um, so any discussion on this? Yeah, sorry. All right, roll call, please. Ellie Pelly. Aye. Gertie? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Luce? Aye. Maurer? Aye. Arthur? Aye. Batson? Aye. All right, motion carries. Okay, and the second item is employment of employees is listed. We have one change in retirement date, two new hires, and a resignation. So we'll get a motion to approve that agenda. So moved. Mm. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? No. Roll call, please. Gertie. Aye. Lundstedt. Aye. Luce. Aye. Mauer. Aye. Arthur. Aye. Batson. Aye. Jelly Pelly. Aye. All right, motion carries. Hey, Anything else? Back okay. Facilities and Finance, Chairman Batson. Uh, thank you, Dr. Grudy. We have uh, one item here. It's a bid recommendation for the uh, JV softball field drainage system at uh, Libertyville High School. Uh, uh, the overview. Do you want to? Yeah, promote a uh, proposed motion by the Board of Education. Uh, the Board of Education accept uh, base bid from Cooling Land Concepts LLC. Cherry Valley, Illinois, in the amount of $57,760 for the Libreville uh, High School JV Softball Drainage System Repair Project. 
A um, little background, we had eight uh, contractors attend the mandatory pre-bid meeting, and we received five bids. Um, the project requires removal of the uh, existing failed drainage system uh, that is presently installed and installing a new multi-flow drainage system. Um, I've, uh, we've conferred with the contractor and their bid complies with uh, the specifications of the bid and um, I'm confident they understand the scope of the project. Uh, in addition, uh, references I spoke with had nothing but good things to say about the contractor, especially when it comes to drainage projects. Okay, so Mark, just to be clear, this is the softball field that is behind the varsity tennis courts, or I should say, the tennis courts. Yes, correct. That's the closest to the lake, that when you run by it now, you, there's puddles and swamp because the drainage system is failing, is that correct? Correct, this is the field. Thanks, Mark. Um, can we have a motion and a second, please? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Okay. Roll. Lundstedt. Aye. Luce? Aye. Mauer? Aye. Arthur? Aye. Hassan? Aye. Valley Polly? Aye. Grudy? Aye. Anything under other? Okay, that concludes the facilities and finance committee report. Thank, Thank you. Property, no seal, uh, IASB, you know what that means? And I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye.